Hello. In this clip, we are going to derive the supply function using our theory of the firm. In week one, we did not use any theory, just accepted the law of supply. This was an empirical observation and by no means a theory. And it suggested that if the market price of a good increases, then the quantity supply will also increase. It turns out that you can use the firm choice model to derive the supply function or supply curve, which means that this firm theory is actually the theory behind the law of supply. But in order to do that, we need to see, we need to clarify the relationship between the firm's willingness to produce and the market price. We have to do this in the long run and in the short run separately. Because the long run problem is easier, let me start with that. In the long run, we know that all costs are variable costs. The reason is that if the firm wishes to exit the market, the firm needs to get rid not only of its laborers, but also its capital stock. And by, stepital, uh, by capital goods, you can think of equipment and buildings or simplicity. Now, in the long run, selling these will be possible. So, in the long run, the firm can just simply get rid of all of its capital holdings, so there will be no fixed cost to pay. Under such circumstances, we can argue that a rational firm will only produce, that is, stay in the market, if it can make an economic profit. When it makes a loss, that is, negative economic profit, a firm will simply exit the market. In the special situation, when the firm makes zero profit, then it will be indifferent between leaving the market or staying in the market. It is a tradition in microeconomics to assume that when a firm makes zero economic profit, then it will just keep operating in the market. Using these assumptions, and this way of thinking, we can now start with a graphical derivation of the supply function in the long run. We use the standard graphic for the firm's choice problem, and we define a marginal cost curve, which is, for simplicity here, is a line. But of course, it does not necessarily have to be a line. It could be any positively sloped monotonic function. We also have an average total cost. The ATC and the MC curves are going to intersect at the minimum of the ATC. We know that if the market price of the good is less than the minimum of the ATC, which is denoted here by, uh, by P min, then the firm will not be willing to stay in the market because it makes a loss. If the price in the market equals the minimum of the ATC, then the firm is going to be willing to operate at its efficient scale, which is denoted here by Q min. But what happens if the price increases above the minimum of the ATC? then a new choice will be optimal and it will be along the MC curve. Just higher price will mean that the firm is willing to increase its production. Continuing this exercise, we find that if price changes even more, then we will still have an optimal profit maximizing choice along the MC curve. That means that once the price is above this minimum P min, which is the minimum of the ATC, the firm is going to always choose a quantity and price combination along the marginal cost line. So the marginal cost is going to be the long run supply curve. If the price is lower than the minimum of ATC, then, of course, the firm's output will be zero because the firm will leave the market. And that's the reason that the supply function only starts 
at the point B uh, min and Q min. So below that, we have a non-continuous supply function. Now we derive the supply function in the short run. The difference between the short run and the long run problem in this case is that in the short run, even if the firm decides to stop producing the good and sends away all of its workers, even then there will be some costs to pay because fixed costs will be there independently of the size of the production. This is because it takes some time to sell the capital goods like equipment and buildings. And meanwhile, that firm still needs to pay a rental price for them. The first case is the same, that is when the market price equals or exceeds the minimum of ATC. In the long run, then the firm will operate, which means that in the short run, it will operate as well. So we are not really interested in analyzing the situation again. When the market price is below the minimum of ATC, however, and the firm will make a loss, then an interesting choice problem will appear. The firm may actually take two actions. First, it can simply stop producing. In this case, it still has to pay uh, uh, the fixed costs. That means that it will make a loss equaling the fixed costs. Or it can keep producing. That means that it is going to make a negative profit. And this negative profit is, will be then total cost minus total revenues. The rational firm is going to keep producing until it can sell all of its uh, capital goods and can exit the market, as long as the fixed costs are larger than the negative profit it can make by producing. If, however, this relationship is just the opposite, then the firm will shut down immediately, send away its workers, and will be willing to pay uh, loss equal FC as long as it is still on the market. Continuing this way of thinking, we can define the following condition. The firm will keep producing even while making a loss in the short run if the, fir if the fixed costs are larger than the negative profit. You can see that both sides here has FC. So we can just simply get rid of FC by subtracting it from both sides. And that's going to give us basically the variable cost and the total revenue. So as long as total revenue is above the variable cost, the firm will decide to keep producing until it can exit the market. We know that in a perfectly competitive market, total revenue is P times Q, with P being just a constant. This means that if you take the average of the total revenue, then you get just simply the price. So if we divide both sides of the above condition by Q, then basically we have a different version of the same condition. As long as the market price of the good exceeds the average variable cost, the firm will keep producing for a short time uh, until it can get rid of the, its, uh, its capital goods and can exit the market, therefore. So summarizing all findings, if the market prices were above ATC, the firm makes economic profit and will just keep producing in the market. That's it. The interesting two cases are the following. When the price is above the average variable cost, but below the average total cost. In this case, the firm will, in the long run, leave the market, but until that point, until 
the time when it can already sell its capital goods, it will still keep producing. If the price is below the average variable cost, then the firm will immediately stop producing and this is what we call the shutdown point for the firm. Now we look at the short run supply curve graphically. We have the same situation as before. A linear positively sloped marginal cost function and a U-shaped ATC function. We already know that the firm will keep producing and remain in the market if the price is above the minimum of ATC. Because we are looking at the short run, we also need the average variable cost function. The average variable cost function is linear because the MC was assumed to be linear, but it does not have to be the case. If we use these linear cost functions, then we can already see that as long as AVC is less than the market price, the firm will choose a production along its uh, marginal cost curve. So the short run supply curve is going to be somewhat longer than the long run supply curve.